With the recent release of the Sigma 50mm f2 DGDN, there are now a total of six small and lightweight 50mm lenses to choose from in this lens class. So I've managed to round them all up for testing and we're going to find out today which is the best. Starting from the cheapest to the most expensive in US dollars, we have the Sony 50mm f1.8 priced at just $248. For the price, you very much get what you pay for. It has a predominantly plastic build with no weather sealing and no manual buttons or switches, just a manual focus ring. That said, it is one of the smallest and lightest lenses in the group, only bested by our next contender, the Samyang 45mm f1.8. And yes, before you start in the comment section, I know it's not a true 50mm lens, but for me, it's certainly close enough to fit within this group, and plus, it's my channel, so I make the rules. Anyway, for $327, you once again get a very small, lightweight, but predominantly plastic lens with no weather sealing and no manual controls besides a focus ring. Next is the Yongnuo 50mm f1.8, priced at $345. Now, although this lens is only 18 bucks more than the Samyang, you do get a bunch more features for your money, including a solid metal construction, manual MF to AF switch, two customizable AF lock buttons, and although the lens itself isn't weather sealed, it does at least have a rubber gasket around the lens mount to help prevent crap getting inside your camera once the lens is attached. This is also one of the heaviest lenses in the test, but to be fair, I wouldn't really consider any of these choices to be backbreakers. Good news, we're over the halfway mark now, and next we have the Viltrox 50mm f1.8 priced at $359. This is also a fully metal lens, but unfortunately it doesn't provide any kind of weatherproofing. On the lens there's a declicked manual aperture dial and also a focus ring, but that's about it in terms of manual controls. This lens is just a few grams heavier than the Yongnuo, making it joint heaviest of the group, tied only with the next lens, which is the Sigma 50mm f2 DGDN, priced at $639. Being almost $300 more expensive than the last lens, it's one of the priciest options available, but you do get a full metal construction with weather sealing around the lens mount, though no internal weather sealing, unfortunately. There's also a manual aperture ring that clicks at each fraction of a stop, and a manual focus ring, as well as an MF to AF switch. Now, if you thought that lens was pricey, let me introduce you to the Sony Zeiss 55mm f1.8. Despite being around 10 years old, brand new, this lens is still going for around $998. So it must be filled with tons of features, right? Well, um, no, unfortunately. I mean, it's made from metal, which is always really nice, and it has a manual focus dial. Oh, and it's the only lens in this lineup that actually includes proper internal weather sealing, but it also lacks a rubber seal around the lens mount, which is a bit of a shame. But anyway, when it comes to manual focus, in a nutshell, the Sony and the Yongnuo are by far the worst performers, being super inconsistent and delayed, so if you use manual focus at all in your work, definitely avoid these two. The rest were all nice to use, and although the lenses use a fly-by-wire system, they all felt pretty linear to operate. The only other the thing to note is that the Zeiss has a super short throw to it, meaning you only have to rotate your wrist around 90 degrees to complete a full focus pull, whilst the other options require at least a 180 degree rotation. All of these lenses exhibit focus breathing, unfortunately, which is that zoom effect created when you rack the focus in and out, but the Viltrox has the least amount, so if you are a videographer and this type of thing really bothers you, then this could be the one to watch. So it's time to hand out some points now, and starting with features and build, I think the Yongnuo and the Sigma both deserve points here because they both offer the most in terms of features and they also feel the most solid in the hand due to their all metal construction. In terms of handling I think all of these lenses deserve a point as they're all super small and lightweight and that makes them super pleasant to use on either a full frame camera or APS-C body. Finally there's price and I'm going to have to give the points to Sony, Samyang, Yongnuo and Viltrox as they're noticeably cheaper than the Sigma and the Zeiss which are very expensive in comparison. Moving on to autofocus in photo mode and in good lighting conditions all of these lenses are rapid to focus with no signs of hunting. In low light conditions, the AF speed takes a hit a little bit with all of these lenses, but in terms of accuracy, none of the lenses struggle to find the target, which is certainly good news. When shooting wide open in high speed continuous mode, the vast majority of the images taken with the Sony, Samyang, Sigma, and Zeiss were all sharp and in focus with only one or two slightly misfocused images. The Yongnuo and the Viltrox were the worst performers with around half of the images taken either being slightly out of focus or just completely unusable. So that means in this round, the Yongnuo and the Viltrox have to miss out on points as clearly they're not quite as accurate to focus as the other contenders. Switching over to video mode now, and none of the lenses have any problems tracking George as he walks towards the camera at a regular pace. Repeating the test, but this time at a faster pace gave me the same exact outcome. As for AF noise, starting with the best performers, we have the Samyang, Sigma and Zeiss, producing very little noise at all.
followed closely by the Yongnuo and the Viltrox, which created a loud buzzing sound. And then, well, there's the Sony. However, when shooting in a real-world scenario, all of these lenses are perfectly capable of capturing top-quality video footage. The lightweight nature of these lenses means that they're an absolute joy to use, either handheld or whilst mounted to a gimbal, and they all appear to work absolutely fine using my Sony A7 Mark IV's IAF and face detection features. If you do happen to use manual focus for video work, then it's also worth noting that although the Samyang is extremely small and lightweight, the AF dial is also quite thin, and if you have larger hands like me, it can make it a little bit fiddly to use. The Yongnuo, on the other hand, has the largest focus ring, and it's also the only one to be fully rubberized, meaning that it was super easy to locate it just using touch alone. It is just a shame that the manual focus on this lens is so inconsistent, but potentially this could be something that Yongnuo decide to fix in a future firmware update, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Broadly speaking though, in terms of video performance, I really don't have much to complain about any of these lenses, so that means they all deserve a point in this round. In our Pokeballs test, when shooting wide open from from the same distance, the Samyang creates slightly smaller orbs due to its wider focal length, and the Sigma also produces slightly smaller balls because of its f2 maximum aperture. On the other hand, the Zeiss creates the largest orbs because of its slightly longer focal length. As for bokeh ball shape, the Yongnuo, Sigma, and Zeiss provide the roundest looking orbs, only turning into a cat's eye shape towards the edges of the frame, whilst the Sony and the Viltrox orbs are unfortunately misshapen across the majority of the image. The Samyang orbs also feature a prominent jagged edge, which isn't very nice to look at. Moving on to texture and the Samyang, Viltrox, Sigma and Zeiss lenses all feature an onion ring effect with the Samyang being the worst offender by some margin. Although the Yongnuo doesn't have onion ringing it does have a slight orange peel effect whilst the budget Sony option provides the cleanest results of them all. As for general bokeh quality the Samyang creates quite a messy and textured bokeh whilst the other lenses all produce a nice softly focused area. Now I know that was a lot to take in so here is a breakdown of all of the pros and cons of each lens in terms of bokeh. Feel free to pause the video now and look over this in more detail if you want to, but basically the Zeiss is the overall winner in this round and therefore it picks up a full point. I also believe that the Sony, Yongnuo and Sigma options deserve half a point as they all come in a joint second place. Now let's look at image quality starting with our lens flare test. It turns out that the Samyang actually provides the best protection from flaring with all of the other lenses offering a pretty poor result to be honest. The flaring on the Viltrox in particular is pretty wild. But in truth if this type of thing really bothers you then all of these lenses do come included with lens hoods for added protection in harsh lighting conditions. On our longitudinal chromatic aberration test the Samyang's results are by far the cleanest of the lot with the rest of the lenses producing varying strengths of teal fringing above the area of sharp focus and red or amber fringing beneath it. The Yongnuo and the Samyang display pincushion distortion at the edges whilst the other lenses are all pretty much distortion free. In terms of center sharpness they're all pretty much on par when shooting wide open at their respective maximum apertures. The only one that really Really stands out to me is the Zeiss which is marginally sharper than the rest and also displays more contrast than the other options. The Samyang unfortunately has a strong blue and amber fringe whilst the other lenses either have a slight red or green tint to them but nothing quite as major. At the corners they all soften out a fair amount though arguably the Yongnuo provides the best results of the bunch. Shooting at the minimum focusing distances for these lenses the Viltrox isn't able to focus anywhere near as close as the other options and it also provides the softest results with the Yongnuo also tailing slightly behind the others in terms of sharpness. The Sony, Samyang and Sigma are all on par in terms of sharpness whilst the Zeiss is clearly the best option of the group with a much sharper result. When working with these lenses out on a real photo shoot they were all so small and lightweight that they were all honestly a joy to use. Personally I really love shooting with a 50mm lens as I find it so versatile to use. It's just long enough to avoid any unflattering amounts of distortion but it's also not quite as long as an 85mm lens which is the more traditional option for portraits but that's good because you don't have to stand miles and miles away in order to gain a full length portrait. In terms of general performance, all of the lenses seem to work fine with my Sony a7 Mark IV's IAF and face detection, with the exception of the Viltrox, which would on occasion bug out a little bit. Unfortunately, because it happened so randomly, I wasn't able to capture it on camera, but it seemed to happen most when shooting in continuous AF mode and when shooting full length portraits. Basically, the AF would just appear to quickly rack backwards and forwards past the target whilst I was half depressing the shutter button but as soon as I took the photo and fully depressed the shutter button it would lock on correctly and the photo would be fine. 
fine. This means that it wasn't something that actually affected my final images, but it definitely was annoying. Hopefully this is something that will be fixed in a future firmware update, as I know Viltrox are generally pretty good at providing regular updates for all of their lenses. Anyway, I've already waffled on for far too long, so rather than me just talking at you, why don't you just sit back, relax, and enjoy the images along with this smooth, smooth jazz. So before we move on to scoring, I should also point out that obviously two of these lenses aren't strictly 50mm lenses. The Samyang is slightly wider at 45mm and the Zeiss is a fraction longer at 55mm. So how does this affect things? Well, the Samyang does allow you to pack slightly more real estate into the frame, whilst the 55mm is slightly more zoomed in. Though to be honest, it really didn't affect how I composed my shots and it was often just a case of leaning slightly further forward or backwards to obtain the same kind of shot as the other 50 millimeter options. So as we've seen, all of these lenses clearly excel in different areas. So just for clarity, once again, here is a breakdown of all the strengths and weaknesses of each of the lenses in terms of image quality, which should hopefully make things a little easier to digest. Essentially though, the Zeiss offers the best overall image quality and therefore deserves a full point, whilst the Sony, Samyang and Sigma come in a close second place and deserve half a point. So when tallying up the final scores, it appears that we have a three-way tie between the Sony, Sigma and Zeiss. So which of these lenses should you buy? Well, ultimately, it all depends on how much dollar you're willing to spend. If you're working to a super tight budget and you're happy to compromise on things like build, features and image quality, and you also have a pair of ear defenders handy for when you're using the AF on this thing, then the Nifty 50 from Sony is a surprisingly good value for money option. However, if you only want the best of the best, no matter the cost, then the Zeiss is going to give you premium quality results in terms of bokeh and general image quality. For everyone else in the middle, there's always the Sigma, which is a very solid middle ground option. All of that said, personally, I wouldn't go for any of those options, and instead, I would just look to buy a second-hand copy of the Zeiss lens. Because this lens is around 10 years old now, that means there's plenty of second-hand copies available to buy online. After a quick search, I found a bunch of them for sale right now on MPB in excellent condition for just under $400, which is a saving of almost $600 compared to buying it brand new. But which lens would you go for and why? Be sure to let me know in the comments, and while you're down there, if you could be a complete hero, and click the like button that would really help me out and also don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next one